Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Now for years, many manufacturers have used the Nürburgring Lord Schleifer as a test circuit for various cars in production, namely companies like Ferrari, Porsche, AMG and Mercedes and a few others in between. Today, what we're gonna do is see if we can get close to that time set by a couple of those people and see if we can beat them in Gran Turismo 7. Now, over the years, the lap times at the Nürburgring have been coming down as manufacturers produce cars in order to try and beat the lap time set by those produced before them. New packages are invented, new cars are invented, lots of things are invented. Basically, cars go faster. Back in 2010, Mark Bassinger took this, the Pigani Zonda R around the Nürburgring. 750 horsepower of V12 beautifulness that's definitely not a word, but you get what I mean. A car designed to show what can be done when you just don't follow the rules. It's not a road car, and in fact, it's not even a track car, because most of the tracks in the world, you can use it on because it's too loud. But this is what the lap looked like. Now, first of all, let me very quickly apologize for the quality of this video. This was set, as I say, in 2010, so, 24 years ago so the quality isn't as good as the quality of the videos you get now but you get a general idea of just how quickly this guy is going this car was built by Pagani to show just what you could do with a car when you don't have any of the restrictions that modern day road cars have or in fact most of the modern day race cars have it has got an absolute screamer of a v12 fitted and if you look at some of the other videos on YouTube of videos of outside of the car, you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. Now, as we come through the left-hander here, you can see a sign there that says 70. Now, I'm pretty sure he's not doing 70 miles an hour at this point. Not even close to it. Unfortunately, this video doesn't show the speed of what he is travelling. It does in the video that we will show next, though, and it is mind-boggling when you convert it to miles per hour. So through the foxhole then as he goes up the hill into the left-hander, he does seem to be uh, slowing down quite a bit for the corners, but trust me, he isn't. This is scary fast. Going through here, one of the fastest parts of the circuit other than the, uh, the dotting the straight. I will point out at this point that there are some corners on this track, all 12 miles of it, and each of them have a name. Unfortunately, I don't know what they are. So we're gonna go with names such as Dave, Gary, Stephen, Ben. We might throw in a Phil and a few girls' names, Katie, Sarah, you get the idea. We'll go Adlib, do it off the cuff. So he's going into the first carousel here. I know the name for that one, it's safe. But as he comes out of the carousel, absolutely no idea what this corner's called. So he's going there. Uh, through Dave there, we'll call that Dave. Anyway, onto the Dottinger straight, coming up to finish the lap. He's uh, he's entering Gary, now he's coming out of Gary and going into Susan. Coming out of Susan, possibly a little bit too quickly maybe, no, 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 he's fine. But he's coming across the line to finish that lap at a 647.50. Now, there have been a few attempts since the Bugani lap that have reduced the time a little bit more, but recently, another record has been set by this guy, Maro Engel, in the bonkers AMG1. A over 1,000 horsepower monster using a 1.6 litre twin turbo V6 with four electric motors. This car is in fact a road car but look how quickly it gets round the Nürburgring. So here's Mara then in the car, strapping on a gargantuan size pair of gonads for this lap, I'm sure. You can't quite see it, but trust me, that's, that's what he was doing. Definitely wasn't just putting harnesses on. So this lap was, uh, was recorded a couple of weeks ago, I believe, and he smashed the lap record. We'll show you the time at the end, but we'll go through some highlights of the lap here. This car was developed by AMG Mercedes using an F1 engine, a 1.6 litre twin turbo 
hybrid engine producing over 1000 horsepower. It is slightly different, however, from the Pagani. This car is a road car. It is road legal and is available for the general public to buy if you've got a horrendously disgusting amount of money. But it is a monster, for want of a better word. You can see the louvers there popping up. Now, I can tell, actually, this is an interesting one. It looks like, you'll see in the footage in a moment, it looks like he actually presses a button to get these louvers popping up. So they are nice and flat through the, uh, through the straight parts of the circuit. But as he comes into corners, you can raise them up for a bit of extra downforce, thus giving the car more grip. I'm trying to sound mildly intelligent here, but it's probably not working. But coming through the foxhole for the first time, look at the speed he's pushing 180 miles an hour i believe they're absolutely mental i would have serious squeaky bum time at this point but look at him in the camera there just relaxed nice and calm just driving his million pound hypercar through the nurburgring not a care in the world looks quite relaxed to me interior looks a little bit messy i mean he could have probably done a little bit to tidy that up but um we'll let him off we'll let him off he is fairly busy at this point, I'd imagine. So um, yeah, we, we won't we won't hammer him too much for the mess. Louvre's popping up again as he comes into the left hander through this section. One of the fastest parts of the circuit, coming down towards the first carousel. You can hear the resemblance in the engine because it is an F1 engine, as we said. It does actually sound a lot like an F1 car. Funny that, considering they use the same engines. God, my waffling is on point today. Through the carousel then, launching himself out into the uh, the rest of the circuit. Coming through to YouTube corner, probably someone in there taking a picture. I don't, my God, my waffling is horrendous today. I'm just trying to think of things to say until we get to the end of the lap, to be honest, at this point. I don't really know what I'm talking about. But um, he's going through Dave and Gary. Uh, coming down towards Steve, I'd imagine. A little bit of a jump, coming into the right-hander, carrying loads of speed through, avoiding the corners, because as we all know with the Nürburgring, they will result in immediate death, especially on Gran Turismo, as you uh, have probably found out many times. Along the Dossinger then, well into the 200 mile an hour mark, coming through the gantry, just, a, just under 200 miles an hour as he comes through here, but uh, rocket fast, rocket fast. I'd love to have a little go in this. Don't think I'll be very good in it, but I'd like to have a go. But he's going to come across the line to finish his rather spectacular lap in a 629.090. Now, let's see what we can do on Gran Turismo 7. Now, I've had a little bit of an idea. Let's see if we can bring the Pagani back into contention. Can we help the Pagani regain its crown around the Nürburgring? Just look at it, beautiful. I love this car. And in fact, I had a lot of fun making this video. Usually in Gran Turismo, we're stuck with group three and group four in daily races, which is where I spend most of my time. So it was quite nice to do a video using something else. But we're gonna to have to help it out a little bit because it is slightly down on power. So we're gonna whack on this turbo to give us 200 horsepower more, love that. And also what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on a fully customizable racing gearbox because we're going to put a tune on that I found on the internet. Now I know that you can see what I'm doing on screen here but I am required to talk over this bit because it does get slightly boring if I don't so you'll have to bear with my waffling for a little bit longer. So we're going to uh, raise the body height a little bit to allow for the bumps of the Nürburgring so 85 and 95 for the front and rear respectively. 5 and 5 for the anti-roll bar Next one down, we're going to go with 34, and we're going to go with, uh, what's that say? 30, 32? A bit more? 34? Here we go. This this did take a while, I'm sorry. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Uh, what's this bit saying? 44, 44. Okay, that bit, that bit was easy. Next bit is a uh, natural frequency. I'll be honest, I've got absolutely no idea what this means, but the guide on the internet said raise it up to 3.15, so that's uh, that's what I'm gonna do. And this one is even higher. 3.35 for this one. Negative camber, 
We're going to go with a little bit lower on this one, 2.8, I believe. Do I get it right? Was it 2.8? I can't remember. Please, because I'm waffling. There we go. It is. Yes, thank you very much. 2.8. My memory is working. Down to toe angle. Going to adjust this very slightly. Knocking this one up to 0.1. God, I'm not winning any awards for this one. Uh, knocking this one down to 11. And uh, then we're going to do a little bit here as well because the guide said so. But again, I don't really know what it means, but um, apparently it helps the car, so I'm going to go with it. 5, 15, and what's this number say? Wait for it. 15 again. There we go. Right, that's that bit out of the way. Now we're going to do uh, downforce. Now, I made a slight error in this bit. I paid attention to what the guide said, and you're going to see why it was a slight error in just a minute. So I've whacked a load of downforce on the front, but I've taken it out of the rear, which you'd be forgiven for thinking is possibly a bad idea. And in actual fact, you're right, it is a bad idea. It doesn't go very well. You'll find out in a second. Just as I breeze through as fast as possible, through this gearing, I mean, not really much to talk about. Um, you know, what, what can we say here? Hope you're well. Is your mum alright? Have you walked the dog? What colour socks have you got on? Uh, help me out here, people. Um, oh, there we, let's talk about streaming. I stream two, three times a week, in case you weren't aware. Drop a sub so you don't miss it. Also, if you haven't done so already, click the like button as well. It's free. Helps me out. Also, it would um, soften the blow of me talking absolute waffle for the last 10 minutes and make it a little bit more bearable when I come to watch this video back myself later on. Uh, nearly there, don't worry. Sixth gear we're going to make it a little bit shorter. That's done. Make sure you've got the massive snail fitted because we're going to need the other extra power. Right, that's that bit done. Excellent, glad that's over. So let's go into the tracks and let's find the Nürburgring up here. Go into there, across the time trial. On to the Nordschleife and we'll go with 7.15 in the morning. So, lap one then. Here we go. Let's see how we get on. So, into turn one, down into first gear. Probably didn't need first gear, but we've done it now too late. So we're up into third, already above 100 miles an hour. But as we come into this right-hander, the front end stops and the back end doesn't. And this happens. <laughs> So with that in mind, I'm going to go back into settings and I'm going to put a little bit more downforce on the rear wing. I say a little, a lot of downforce on the rear wing. And uh, we'll try that, see how we get on with that one. So let's start another lap. Let's see if we can get around this one without crashing or ruining the lap completely. I'm going to try and waffle through this first lap. Spoiler alert, we do too. You know, you're welcome. But uh, there is going to have to be a small amount of waffling for this. So uh, please bear with me. So down through the first section then. I don't know the names of the bends again, but uh, we'll point out we're on racing soft tyres. I should have mentioned that before actually, but we're going to give ourselves a fighting chance and put some sticky rubber on it. Now what I will say, when I made this video, quite often when I make videos or the weekly videos that I do, it's either in a Group 3 car or a Group 4 car because that is what we normally have for daily races but this one obviously I'm going to use a completely different car and it got me thinking I spend a lot of time in daily races on Gran Turismo 7 I don't really touch the main part of the game or the main body of the game and doing this video and using this car was an absolute riot great fun so I'm going to do more of this because I think it could be a little bit different and I'm also going to include it in the lobby races that I hold which leads me seamlessly on to the point of uh, lobby races which I will be holding now regularly once or twice a week in the evening UK time possibly Wednesdays and Saturdays depending on who is available and what everybody else is doing but it will be around 7.30 each evening you are more than welcome to take part. Add me up on the PlayStation Network. The PlayStation ID is not that quick. I will accept it. Then we can all do some races together. 
I have made a little bit of an error there. So whilst waffling, you will have noticed we did make a small error, which means I'm now going to have to do the lap all over again. But we'll carry on. We'll finish the lap. We'll set a benchmark and we'll see what we get to. Another error as we go off on a straight, believe it or not. It just really goes to show how good my skills in this game are. But also by making this video, it allows me to demonstrate just how good this game looks. I mean, look at it. The PlayStation 5 Pro is on the way and it's going to offer even more of a graphical improvement, just a technical term, on Gran Turismo 7. Please ignore the fact that I've just crashed again. But just, just look at it. Beautiful. I know it isn't the best game in the world in terms of physics and things like that, and there are bugs, and yes, we moan about it. Well, I say we, mainly me, moan about it every day that I stream because something goes wrong. But let's be honest, it looks fantastic. You can see the rays coming through the clouds and the trees because there aren't clouds in the sky. I've made that bit wrong. Coming through YouTube corner though. Got that bit right. I know that one. I know. I can tell you're all just as impressed as I am. Through this section, feathering throttle a little bit because this car did suffer from a small amount of understeer, but a manageable amount of understeer as we come through this section here down towards the second carousel. Trying to carry as much speed as possible as we belt out down towards the carousel. Tuck it in nicely, off we go, lovely. Down the Dottinger, see how fast we can get in a straight line. 208, not bad. Similar sort of speed to the AMG. So it's gonna make the lap time quite close, I think. We'll find out in just a second because I'm about to cross the line. Come through the right-hander, through the pit entry. Where are we? 6, 0, 8, 9, 10. Ooh, I think we're going to beat it. Yes, we have. So on the first attempt, we have done a 6, 14, 4, 2, 4, which is faster than the AMG. However, I think there is more time to be had in this lap because I made some mistakes. So let's try and do a mistake-free lap, if that is at all possible. So we're going to start another one. Now I'm going to try and waffle a bit less in this one. But this lap, I'm going to use some different camera angles so it will be even more exciting than the first lap, I promise. But look at it, look how good it looks. It sounds nice. You can see the sun glistening off the carbon, sort of, because he's in shadows at the moment. No, we're not, there it is, it's back, lovely. God, I'm so sorry for my waffling today, boys and girls, but I just wanted to, uh, do a little comparison of comparison video if you like and give you something different to the content that i would normally make which usually involves me either getting angry being annihilated on a track and punted off by many many sausages sausages is the word i was looking for then this one i wanted to be a little bit different popped a wheelie over that bit see that 10 points to gryffindor coming down into the right hander again don't know the name of it, we call it Ben. Going through Ben, coming out of Ben. It's down the hill. I know this bit, Foxhole. This bit, I know this bit. I know. Yes, I've got one right. Anyway, if you would like to see more of this sort of content, more of this type of video, please let me know. On the other hand, if this video is awful and you hate it, also let me know. Just, just be nice, because nobody likes a troll. Nice comments only. Constructive criticism. That's what we'll go with. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Just, just don't be a bell end. Anyway, moving on with the lap. We are still about four minutes away from the finish, so you're going to have to put up with me talking for a little bit longer. But look, there's the camera angle again that I was talking about. Look how good this game looks. I mean, seriously. It might not be the best simulator on the planet and it is pretty much an arcade game, but just look how good it looks. Personally, I don't think there's another game that comes close to it. Gran Turismo looks fantastic and it is set to look even better, I think, with the release of the next console, which I did a video about actually in the last video. I'll leave a link for that one at the end of this one. If you want to watch it, feel free. Feedback is always appreciated, but again, constructive feedback, please. Boys and girls, nobody likes a troll. Fact. 
Anyway, through a right-hander, again, don't know the name, gonna call it Gary. Through uh, this section is actually really tricky. This car, as I said, seems to have a bit of understeer at higher speeds, which is a little bit scary, I won't lie, but it's only a game, so nobody cares. I'm gonna go on to this part of the circuit, which is one of the fastest parts of the circuit. Again, probably got a name, don't know what it is, but we're getting close to 180 miles an hour in the game that isn't real life, but it adds a dramatic feeling, doesn't it? So we'll go with it anyway. Another TV view look, different angles, all the angles in this video. Hours and hours and hours spent editing this, honest. It's a massive lie, but I did take a while, to be fair. Going through a right-hander then, down in towards a braking zone, because we're gonna go towards the carousel again on this lap. We'll see if we can make it. Down into first, I believe, for it, but look at it. Oh, what a beaut. Oh, I want one. Do you know what? If I had the money, this is what I'd buy. I mean, I couldn't use it anyway, because as I said, you can't use it as a road car, because it isn't a road car, and you can't use it on a track. It's um, an interesting one, this. There's probably one or two circuits in the world that you could take it to, but most circuits have decibel levels, and this car, as I said, is an absolute screamer, howling V12, naturally aspirated V12, interestingly made by AMG. So good little comparison there between the AMG one and this. AMG one obviously is not available in the game. I probably would have used that if it was, but it's interesting to see how close the Pagani gets to the AMG in real life. And in actual fact, on the first lap, we did a 614. It's not a million miles away from a real life lap. So, it, it, you know, the comparison between real life and Gran Turismo, you know, it's pretty good. I think they get it pretty close, but back on board through this section, very tricky. This one, I'm gonna pop a wheelie here. Look, there he is, wee, lovely, 10 points. Through the right-hander, call that one Steve. This one, Devon, just a random name, don't know why I thought of that one, but through here, quite tricky. Little bit of understeer, pretty much hanging on for dear life at this point. Just into the 180 mile an hour point, into the right-hander, carrying as much speed as possible as we go down towards the second carousel for the final time before we get on to the Dottinger. I know, I know, it's impressive. I actually know the actual name for a part of this circuit. A little bit wide as we come out of Shane there and uh, coming in a little bit wide into, uh, into Gemma Collins. That's definitely not a phrase that many people have wanted to say, I'm sure. But onto the Dottinger Strait for the final time and see how fast we can get. I mean, I'd imagine it's probably similar to the previous lap, but we can live in hope. Up to 206, 7, 8, 9, nearly 10, 200, where are we? I'm just waiting for it to go through the gantry, talk amongst yourselves. There we are, there we go. 211 as we go through the gantry. Down the hill, up into this final section. Can we beat the lap time that we set previously? It's got to be close. Got to make it through here, nice and tidy. Let's get the exit of this right-hander right. Nope, we didn't shock her, but we're going to come across the line on a 606.676. All the sixes. But that is it for this one, guys. Thank you, as always, for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you feel like setting a lap time as I have, please let me know in the comments what you managed to get your time down to. It would be interesting to know just how many people are better than me at this game. I'd expect the list to be long and distinguished. But as always, look after yourselves and one another. If you haven't done so already, please feel free to hit the like and the subscribe button. I would very much appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.